So hey everybody, welcome back to part four of the Brutus Monroe Test Lab. And today we are going to test the four different inks compared to doing different types of techniques. We're going to emboss with it, heat emboss. So we have our heat gun and our embossing powder. We are going to do the blending method. Um, and I'll show you a trick with that. That's why those little pieces are out right here. We are also going to show generation stamps. So not just the first time you stamp, but if you do not re-ink, how does it stamp on a second, third, and fourth generation? I think we're gonna try and do three generations, or four total, so four different stamps. And then we're also gonna do something that I do with all my inks, and if it doesn't do that, I'm kind of ticked about it, which is, um, <clears throat> distressing the edges and then uh, inking the edges of distressed paper or without distressing, how does it work? So we're gonna play with that as well. First step is there is also a prize. There is a giveaway that I'm doing where I'm gonna give away, uh, four people are gonna win British Monroe chalk inks. You're gonna get a mini kit or a mini set. This happens to be one example of the mini set right here. This is a set of four, this is the winter set, but there's gonna be four lucky winners and you're gonna get one of the sets that we already have, so four, four mini inks. All I need you to do is leave a comment on this video and says you are interested in winning and subscribe to my channel. If you're already a subscriber, fantastic. And if you have already watched and entered the giveaway for the other three videos that you see linked up in the I card, and they'll also be linked at the end of the video, you can enter again for a fourth chance. Um, this is for my 1500 subscribers. So as soon as I fit 1500, we will have our winners. So continue to keep entering in and seeing what you can see if you can win. That's it, basically. There's also a coupon code for getting any amount off of anything that says chalk ink from Brutus Monroe. It is a 20% off discount. Just use coupon code Aaron Reed, which you'll see right here at the bottom of the video. Um, all lowercase, all one word. My other videos, quickie rundown, I tested um, all of these inks and the inks we have are the Brutus Monroe chalk ink. We have the distress ink from a Ranger. We have the stays on solvent ink pad. We have the dare to be artsy. We have the chalk inks, which come from the dollar store. We have the color box chalk inks. And then we have two Prima inks. This is the dry fluid chalk ink and the chalk edger. So these are all the inks that we use. And we're going to test the first video tested to see if they would, how well they stamped on regular cardstock, glossy cardstock, if they could take markers once you stamped on it, if they just blended into a mess, and if you could watercolor with them. The second video we tested canvas, burlap, glass, and plastic to see how well any of these surfaces held up or any of these inks held up to those surfaces. The third video, we kind of hit some unusual substances. We hit clay, foil, tile, and wood. It, we're kind of looking to see what works for whatever projects. And if the ink you have already works for you, fantastic. If not, then here's a clue about what you can use to fit into that category. I do not have every ink under the world, but these are the ones I did have, and they kind of fit into a lot of the categories of other stuff that's out there. So I know some of you wish I was doing the uh, mementos. I know some of you wish I was doing the, um, the Stampin' Up. I just don't have them, so that's why I didn't do them. If I had them, I would have included them. I am also comparing all similar colors, and I would have done 100% red, but I did not have a red stays on, and I did not have a red chalk ink. So this is what I had that was still actually viable. So let's get going. So the first test that we're gonna do is we're gonna do the blending method. So the blending method is what you see right here. Um, this is the what Ranger has came up with a long time ago, but I do not have enough ink pads where I would end up I'd be contaminating one ink from another. So before I got my blending tool, this was my quickie fix and my way of cheating per se is by using felt. So this is plain old felt. You wanna get a light color, something that you can actually see your color on there. White, cream, tan, anything works just fine. And cut yourself a little a rectangle. And this that's what these little guys have already been done. You need, <clears throat> and is this a pretty similar um, quick fix for it? Yes. Is this as good as this? Probably not, but it's what I got. And if you're kind of in a budget crunch and you need something, this is an easy fix. Fold it in half and staple. You're then going to kind of tuck in the edges here like this to create yourself kind of a little pocket. So that way this side's nice and flat. You have a nice flat surface. It's not got bumps and creases in it. And then you're going to staple this again. And so now you have yourself a little blending tool. You're gonna to grab the part that actually has a staple and this is what you're gonna blend with. And I did eight separate little blending tools. That's why I have all eight of these. So that way I do not contaminate one ink to another as I go through and blend. 
And between each one of these ink tests, I'm going to clean off my mat. Spray a little squeaky clean stamp cleaner on there. And then I'm gonna get just a paper towel, or I might use a wet wipe. And I'm gonna clean off whatever ink may already be there left behind from the previous one. For the blending method, you do need a non-stick mat because you are gonna be starting off the mat, rubbing and then coming on too. So just to kind of show you the method, you're gonna dab your ink, your little blending tool into it, and then you're gonna do a circle your pattern onto and see how well it blends, just like this. I know you can blend other colors and that's one of the, the qualities of this, but because I don't have a ton of extra colors here, we are only going to test just the one color and how well you see it blending. So I'm gonna do the British one row with you and then I'm gonna speed up all the other ones just so it goes a little faster. So go ahead and blot into, and so you can see the ink onto your felt, just like this. Really get it, because this has not had any kind of ink on there. Start off and start blending. It is going to be darker on the edges because that's just the nature because you're coming off and it's catching on the edge of that paper. And so we are just blending. Coming in and blending. You know, you could blend as dark or as light as you want. I'm going to try and do about the same on all of them and I'm going to do the corner just like you see and then I'm going to lay it down over here just like that. Now I'm going to clean my stamp, my mat off, spray. Wipe it down, get any loose. This one is done, so I'm just gonna place it off to the side. I don't think I'm really gonna need to use that again. Now I'm gonna move on to the next ink, get my next little piece of paper, and go from there. So I'm gonna keep on doing this, but speed it up. All right, so let's take a look at them. Every single one did the blending method. It's just a matter of what kind of look you're going for. So if we're comparing everything to the Ranger, because that's one of the qualities that the Ranger has is it's called a distress ink and therefore you can do the blending method. If you notice it, it kind of has the dark and the light and it looks very distressed. If we're comparing it to that, because that's basically what it was, one of its designs is, the top four did that. The stays on definitely was a lot less uh, dark in the pigment and I really had to keep re-inking my ink because it was drying too fast. I think that was part of the problem because it's not meant to do that. It's not meant to be a blending ink. The Dare to be Artsy and the Brutus Monroe both did a fine job where you get some light and some dark edges and you can see it's kind of picking up on the edges like the Ranger is and it's kind of giving that distressed feel. The bottom four they all coated wonderfully. I would say the chalk ink kind of did the closest to the top four, um, but the rest they just coated the paper. It really didn't do that distressed light darkness. It just, here we're gonna coat the paper in a color, which is absolutely fine if that's what you wanna do. It really depends on what technique you're looking for. Do they all blend on paper with a blender? Sure, but it's just a matter of what you're going for. All right, the next thing we're going to test is we're going to test embossing. Now, to make it fair, I am not using any of the companies that are here embossing powders. That way, they're not specially formulated to work with the ink that is there. So I'm using a generic embossing powder that I got from my mother-in-law years ago. And it is clear, so therefore, we can actually see the color. So I didn't want to put a colored one on top so we can actually see how it's working with the ink that's there. We are going to use the same stamp for every single one of these. And we are going to clean the stamp prior to using it and then dabbing it off. Because some of these inks may dry fast, we are not going to stamp all of them, then emboss all of them, and then heat all of them. We're gonna do them actually as soon as we stamp it. So let me give you, an, for instance, the Brutus Monroe. We are going to stamp our ink, stamp our stamp. So stamp the stamp again. Go ahead, and we're just using white old cardstock, nothing fancy. I'm doing it on the diagonal so it fits better. Pop it up. Place it in here, put my embossing powder on it, tap it off, put it off to the side, and heat set. Alright, so 
that's where it is. We're going to set it off to the side. Now we're going to move the next one. So I'm also going to make sure that I clean my stamp between each time, patting it dry and moving on to the next ink. And so I'm going to continue doing this all the way down the line, testing every single ink, keeping it as fast because some of these are quick, ink, quick dry inks and some of them aren't. Typically, the best ink to do embossing is something that's going to stay wet for a little bit longer. So your chalk inks, which British Monroe is a chalk ink, but it's a fast dry chalk ink. So you can't let it sit for too long or it will not let the embossing powder stick to it. But we're going to test all of them here in a minute and see how well they do. So now we're moving on to the Ranger and I'm going to speed up. So as I was editing the video, I'm realizing and this is a couple of days later, as you can tell, I got sparkles, um, that when I used the clear embossing powder, it did not show um, how good of a coverage and whether or not it stick because clear just looked like it was clear. So instead I switched gears and I know I didn't get this on camera. Um, I'm just trying to speed up my time. I'm running out of time <laughs> before Christmas. Um, so I used gold and so I just went through the exact same process you just saw. I mean, everything was identical. Um, I went through and I did every single one. I cleaned the stamp between each one. I heat set them individually as they went along. And so that way you didn't have to see me do it twice or I didn't want to edit the whole thing and not have you think, well, why did she change her nails midway through video? Let's take a look and see. And this is much easier to see now because you can see the color and not just little sparkles on it. All of the bottom ones did a fantastic job. The Studio G Chalk Ink, the Color Blocks, the Prima Quick Dry, and the Prima Resist. They both, all four of them did a really good job of coverage in terms of it stayed wet enough, long enough for the embossing power to stick to it. And here's just one example. Here's the Prima Quick Dry. And see how much of the red you can't see, and that's the point. If you can't see the color underneath, then you know it stuck really well and it was able to do an, a good job embossing. Now there might be some patches here and there. Um, I may not have coated it that well because I was going pretty fast. Uh, but overall, they all did a fantastic job. So if you're looking for a color of an ink that you then can put another color on top or you want to do the clear on top so you can see the color and not use a true embossing ink, then these all work great. The Brutus Monroe did a pretty good job, but I will have to tell you, I had to move fast. Um, if you wait too long or you shake the card too much, you tap too much of the paper, it falls off. But if you move pretty quickly and you have to kind of give yourself a little bit of wiggle room, it does emboss. There are some patches in here, but I wouldn't say any worse than the ones below. It did. It, even though it's a fast drying ink, it was slow enough and I was quick enough that I could go forth and emboss. And then same with the Ranger. Ranger is meant to emboss with. The Distress ink is meant for it. These two, not good at all. Uh, you can see the color completely. They did not, they dried too fast or when I barely tapped it, it all completely fell off. The Brutus Monroe had a little bit more of a lesser drying time or something about it that was allow allowing the embossing powder to stick to it. So there you go. These two are no, the rest are yes if this is fast enough. That's why it's a yes. All right, the next thing we're going to test is we're going to test generation stamps. How well do the stamps take after being stamped? Not just the first time, but the second, third, and fourth time. So we're just going to stamp right here on just printer paper. I'm going to do the Brutus Monroe with you so we can see. Ink it up like you normally would ink to do a first stamp. And this is a technique where you can use this. This is something that it has a cool effect. I've seen this on cards. I've seen this on background papers. I've seen this for lots of different things. I am going to shift these over to the side for now. Um, and it's just a way of doing something different with your stamps and your ink. So here's the first stamp. And then second, third, fourth. 
Okay, and so the whole point is that eventually it will fade. So what we're looking for is how fast does it fade? What does it do? Which one do you like better? And then I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. All right, so I ended up getting little smudgy fingerprints on all this, but let's take a look. So for every single one, the first stamp worked fine. You know, they all work. This one got a little smudged, but it may have been the way that I kind of put it on the ink applicator. Um, it is more of a fluid ink and more of a wet ink, so if you don't apply it evenly, it can leave smudginess effectors. Um, so just gonna keep that in mind. So second generation for all of them pretty darn good. The only one I didn't like as much would be the Prima Resist because again it just looks too smudgy. It doesn't and it really faded fast the second generation. Third generation for all of them this one's almost completely gone. This one definitely fades away. The Brutus Monroe fades away. Stays on to pretty good fading away and I could still see a clear image for all of these three. Like it didn't completely except this one's almost faded to nothing but I can tell it's a cup. It doesn't look blotchy. It looks like a clear stamp image is just fading. Some of these other ones though, for instance, the color blocks, um, the Prima Quick Dry and the Resist, it didn't look like it was fading away. It looked like it was, there's parts that are still dark, but parts that are still light. There's parts that are more outlined than others. It's not just a faded stamp. It's a little bit different. So I don't know if I fully like that, maybe as a distress feeling, um, kind of a different feel. This one did a good job of just kind of fading away. This one, the, it faded away, but on the fourth one, it had some dark areas, almost like it was darker on the fourth generation than it was on the second, but not in all areas. It was kind of splotchy. So they all work. It's just a matter of how you like it and what kind of image you're looking for as your stamp fades into your generations. One of the favorite things I like to do with any of my inks is to distress the edges of my papers. I take the ink and I rub it along the edges before I apply it and I do it in layers. I do it for cards, scrapbook pages, for mixed media stuff, for all kinds of things. I just like the look of the inkness. And so I have found over the years that certain types of inks work better for that. Not the ink, but almost the application, almost the, the way that they put the ink um, thing together. So. As I'm going through and doing it, one of the things I like to do, and I do it for both sides, is I like to rough up the edges, and I'm going to show you one. So this is a distress distressor. Ranger makes one. This just happens to be the Prima. You can also use the size of your scissors um, where you can take it and you can rough it up like this. This was the original way that I did it, but then I got this fun tool, and it just kind of speeds that process along. So it just gives you that rough edge. I don't do it for everything, but I do do it for a lot of uh, my grungy projects and things like that. So I have a rough edge, I have a clean edge, and all I'm gonna do, and this is purely, I think they all do it, but part of the reason for testing it is to see how well I like using the size of it or using the shape of it or using um, the quality of it, and how well do I like the way it inks. So here we go. And this is all it's for, is for inking the edges of my projects. And I'm gonna move it off to the side. So is it picking up? Is it making a nice dark color? Was it easy to use? Um, that's kind of what I'm looking for. And, whoops. You know, I've used this for, I used to be Ranger. So here's one of the downsides sometimes. The little, the bigger types of, and I know Ranger makes small ones, so I can't really knock Ranger for having a big size. It's just that's what I have. Um, sometimes you can get that effect, but sometimes you like that effect. It really, it also depends on how much your paper warps on you. So it really is a personal preference um, for what you like. I will say the bigger bigger ink pads are not my favorite for this method because I don't feel like I get as much control as you can see here. The smaller ink pads, which I think they make baby stays on too now. Everybody's kind of going to the mini inks, which are just easier and you can get more. There's a lot more um, maneuverability to this. So if you notice, the ink pads for all of these guys, even for the big guy, they're all about the same, okay? It's more like a foam layer. It's a little bit similar in the way that it's shaped. Um, so I would say these are very similar in how the ink is stored on the pad, and I like the application of that. 
Okay, now moving on to this one. This is a chalk ink. Again, similar type of construction. See how it's a pad that's attached, but it's not um, like a foam pad. This is a little foamy, but it's not too bad. So there's that one. So, so far, I do like the smaller size. Now, here's my word of advice to any of you that like to do this. This is a little bit of a different shape, and I have found they apply wonderfully. This was one of the original uses of these little guys, and they do a phenomenal job, but the ink part right here, this little guy, it comes loose over time. And I will have to say, these Prima ones do it to me all the time. This is a number one, and this is what it was made for. That's why it has this handle. But they come off all the time, and I've had it happen numerous times. I love the feeling of this little guy, but if you can tell right in here, I've had to re-glue this thing. I don't know if it was this one or if it was the other one. I do love the application of it, and they all do a phenomenal job of inking. Oh, no, this is it. See? I've had to re-glue this because it fell off. And as much, and I would be in the middle of doing the inking, and then all of a sudden, it falls off. And it's happened so many times that I just end up throwing them away because I get so frustrated. I love the, uh, the use of it, and I like the little handle, but the foam, this piece right here, to the, the whatever adhesive they used it and you can tell it's not centered on there correctly because I had to redo it and then it kind of shifted um, it just didn't do what I wanted it to do and I get kind of frustrated with those I have used the Brutus Monroe the dare to be artsy the distress inks the chalk inks this has happened a couple of times where the ink pads fallen off none of these three when I've ever used them have ever had the ink pad fall off on me they are secure and steady and stayed fast and I do not have an issue with them these little guys, however, once they're pretty much fallen off, um, they're toast. And same with the chalk inks. Once they've fallen off, they are toast. There's really no coming back to them. So not how they coat or anything like that. It is purely for how frustrating it can be um, over time. Do they fail? I have also had um, with both of these where these things will tear over time, the ink pads on both of these. The little foam piece in there it rips and it shreds as i'm doing a ton of ton of inking it just falls right off and to me that's very frustrating um i have not had that happen with any of these guys so thanks so much don't forget to go ahead and subscribe and to enter into the giveaway so leave your comment at the bottom that you would like to enter and that you would like to get a chance to win that's it and don't forget to check out the other three videos and leave your comments down there thanks so much bye